Good morning, brothers and sisters, and welcome back to Coffee with Me and Jesus. Praise God. I'll tell you, God is just moving, moving, moving. I get so excited when I hear from other people how God is doing so many wonderful and powerful things in their life. And especially after this women's conference, I see God just sending out women, sending out women to the work, to work for his kingdom. <clears throat> and, excuse me, I need uh, coffee. <laughs> My throat gets a little dry. I think it's because of our Colorado weather. Um, but um, back to coffee with me and Jesus. Um, yesterday, day before yesterday, we were in Jude, and we were talking about praying in your most holiest of faith. And I'm going to read that scripture again. Jude one twenty, But ye, beloved, building up yourselves on your most holy faith, praying in the Holy Ghost. Now, to pray in the Holy Ghost, I want you to understand that this, again, there's no way we can pray. If we pray in our own understanding, we're praying in just that, our own understanding. But when we pray in the Holy Ghost, we're praying in that gift that was imparted to us when we became saved. Because the Father said, through Jesus Christ, that we are commissioned, our assignment is to go and pray, uh, baptizing um, people in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, the Holy Ghost. Um, as a matter of fact, I want to just read that to you. Uh, I should have marked it, but I didn't. But I'm going. It's easy to find because it's in the end of Matthew. It's when Jesus uh, he comes back and he he instructs he instructs the people what to do. And it's in Matthew 28, 19. Go ye therefore. Now that is for you and I and for any other person who has received the good news of the gospel and believes in the word of God. He tells us, go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you. And lo, I am with you always, even unto the end of the world. So when God tells us to pray in the Holy Ghost, we know that means that we're giving, that we're not praying in ourselves, we're praying in the Holy Spirit. We've been baptized in the Holy Spirit, so we're praying in the Holy Spirit. So this knowledge that we get is not of our own or anybody else's. It is a direct line, the plumb line from the Father. See, he, the Father is up here and he drops it through Jesus Christ right down into us and we are baptized in the Holy Spirit and the Holy Ghost and we begin to, to make these groanings that we don't even know what they are, but it's, a, it's like a... Uh, it's a process. Everything in life is a process. It's like a muscle. You have a muscle and it might be weak, but you keep exercising and exercising and that muscle gets stronger and stronger. Well, that is our, our spiritual muscle, the Holy Ghost. We, at first, we pray and it just, it doesn't even seem real. Our own conscious and our own understanding is going against it. It's like, this is not true. This is not true. It's just all rubbish. It's just went out. This is because the enemy, that's his first commission was to put doubt, put doubt in us when God speaks anything. That's what he did with Adam and Eve in the beginning. That's sin. That's doubt. That's a lie. He said, did God really say this to Eve? See, he put doubt there and then that opened the door for him to come and steal the word. So many people believe that this speaking in tongues is demonic and it's not of God. But I'm telling you that it, that's not what the word of God says. The word of God says that being baptized in the Holy Spirit you will speak in a different language and you will pray not in yourselves, but you will pray as the Holy Spirit gives you utterance. So in saying all that, I want us to understand that we, in Jude 20, it says, 
120, it says, Beloved, build yourself up in your holiest of faith. See, because when we come in alignment with God, we can speak out things that are not, and our faith is activated, and we believe it because now God is speaking through us things that are not as though they are, and when we speak in his power, those things transition from are not into now. They are now. They are for the now word, for what is going on right now, and we prophesy things over us. We we are led by the Spirit. We hear by the Spirit. We see by the Spirit. We speak by the Spirit, as in Romans said, not my flesh. I choose not to walk in my flesh, but I am now walking out what God is telling me to walk out in the spirit. Amen. So that has got to be so clear to us because in my conference, God had revealed that people, we are no longer in the day. We are no longer in the month. We are no longer in the hour. We are in the moment of time. See, we are in the moment of time. The clock is ticking. No man knows the hour or the time or the day that God is returning back for his people. So in saying that, God's spirit is pouring out on his sons and his daughters and the children. God is, he said that in the last days, I'm going to pour out my spirit. And that's just what God's doing. His people are elevating and his people are being directed where to go, what to say and, and what to, to, to do all because their ears are inclined and their eyes are inclined, and their mouth is inclined, and they are connected to the Holy Spirit. So that's where you need, if you do not have the Holy Spirit, you need to ask the Lord to baptize you in the Holy Spirit, because God is not a God that's going to come in and just take over. He, he gave us free will, because he wants a people that love him, not that he pounded on them to love him, but that we love him. We Ask him to please reveal the truth of what is written in his word. And God had taken me after um, uh, reviewing and looking back on Jude. He wanted me to go into Revelations. And I thought, Lord, I'm not equipped to go to Revelations. But immediately the Lord stopped me and he said, well, I am Revelation. I have all the knowledge don't worry about what the knowledge of others because you have to rest in me, rely in me, lean on me, and know only through me. So I said, okay, Lord, well, I'm going to read you Revelations 1.1. Praise God. The revelation of Jesus Christ, which God gave to him to show to his servants things which must come shortly which must shortly come to pass and he sent and signified it by his angel unto his servant john so there are things coming and the only way that we truly know that these things are coming is when the holy spirit tells us see we can only know it Man only operates in his own knowledge. Again, 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 I'm coming back to the knowledge of man. The, the scholars, the men who, and women who are scholared, they're schooled in this book. They know this book, but they only know it of their own knowledge and of their own wisdom. But God is saying here there is a knowledge. We can be tapped in and locked in to the knowledge of God through his spirit, through his divine spirit. That is the only way. And the father says, there is only one way to me. It's through Jesus Christ. And people, I'm telling you, you cannot just pick and choose what is comfortable for you in the word of God. The word of God talks about tongues. It talks about, we just read, building yourself up in the most holiest of faith, praying in the Holy Ghost. God is spirit. There are things that are uncomfortable for us, but God is taking us out of our natural um, realm, and he's putting us into this spiritual realm. 
And that's where we have to listen. Our, uh, our eyes and our ears and our whole being has to be tuned in to the Spirit of God. We have to be in this, this place where God wants us. It's a good thing the Lord was telling me this morning. It's a very good thing to be in the Word. It's a very, very good thing. But there is, it's also a good thing to be in the Spirit of God, to just do what His Word says, be still. Be still and know that I am God. Because we have to clear the atmosphere through praise, through worship, through centering in with our God through the Holy Spirit. Because above us, there are rulers and principalities of the air. There's a lot of things that are in the unseen world. And the battle is for our souls, our souls, people. So we, as God's people, have to take what is in the word and read it and ask God to reveal it and teach us because his word of God, because the word of God says, you have my Holy Spirit that you need nobody to teach you. My Holy Spirit will teach you everything. So go and seek him. The word of God says, knock and the door shall be open. Seek and ye shall find. Ask and it shall be given. God, he hears everything. There is no place that you can go, no high point on the face of this earth that you can hide from God. No low point that you can go on the face of this earth to hide from God. No dark place that you can go to hide from our God. Our God sees everything. He is the creator and we are his creation. Of course he knows where you are. Of course he knows ho who you are. And we're going to expand on that tomorrow on how does God know who you are? How can God say that this is for you? Or how can you take this out and say, I, know, I knew you before you were in your mother's womb? How do we know this? We're going to find out tomorrow more and we're going to carry on with that. But for today... Let us not ever, ever put down or blasphemy the Holy Ghost or speak things that we don't understand because this is an abomination to the Lord. This is where he said that he would not forgive. See, God does not want people mocking him or telling others that they are mocking God. If you don't understand, let your yes be yes and your no be no. Anything beyond that is foolish and sinful. That is what is written in the Word of God. So, my friends, I'm going to see you tomorrow and pray, exercise that gift. Pray in the Holy Spirit. You know, some people are like all about the abs. Let's exercise. Let's exercise. Let's get this flat tummy down. You know what I'm telling you today? Uh, exercise profits little, but spiritual exercise will take you right into the kingdom of heaven. Amen. And there's a, there, the Holy Spirit dwells right here. And the, the word of God says to exercise. Exercise your spiritual gift. Pray in the Spirit. Pray at all times in the Spirit. That should be your number one language. The English, the Japanese, the Chinese, the German, the Russian, the Mexican, any other language is secondary. Your primary language should be the Holy Spirit, the gift of tongues. Be blessed, my brothers and sisters, and I'll see you tomorrow. Bye-bye.